But anyways, welcome everybody. Hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing day so far. And uh, I've never actually broken my fast either um, with communion. To be completely honest, that was um, that was something that I've I or broken my yeah broken my fast with communion. I, I think that was amazing for me for my heart um, just to be able to do that and uh, just to continue remembering the reason why we go into prayer and fasting. And I talked about that about three weeks ago, twenty one days ago. I was sitting in this chair and I preached on why we go into prayer and fasting. And I talked about how we don't go into prayer and fasting to move the hand of God. We go into prayer and fasting for God to move our hearts. And so we we went into that and for the past 21 days, I pray and hope that your relationship with God has been on the move. I hope it's been well. But anyways, so I wanted to welcome everybody that is in the chat today. Maybe you're watching Second Service. Maybe you're watching a VOD. Maybe you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on one of the many uh, platforms that we have um, for a podcast. I wanted to welcome all of you. So thank you so much for being here. And so my first question I wanted to ask you guys before we get into what I really want to talk about today is who in here, put a three in the chat, if you have ever spent a significant amount of time trying to get good at something. I don't care what it is. Maybe it's a subject in school. Maybe it's a game, an activity, a sport, a video game. I have tried this and I thought I was going to be a professional at something. I'll be completely honest. I have done this in my life. I tried to get so good. And honestly, if you put your time and your effort and you're practicing for hours and hours and hours for days and weeks and even years, you're eventually going to get better at whatever it is. It's just a known fact. Now, yes, there's going to be a skill ceiling for certain things and activities that you do. I'm never going to be a professional gamer. My reflexes are just not that quick. My reaction time is, well, it's, it's going downhill. It's not going to go up anymore from this point forward. And I've already come to that conclusion, and that's okay. But the thing is, is you're eventually going to get better at what it is that you're doing. Or better yet, let me ask this question. Have you ever spent a significant amount of time being with someone, trying to grow in your relationship with that person. And I would hope that if you're considering marriage in the future, maybe you're engaged or you feel like you want to commit your life to somebody that you would spend a significant amount of time with this individual. But if you do that, you're going to continually see your relationship growing and growing and growing. You're going to see your communication. You're going to see everything just growing in your relationship with that individual. And that is a beautiful thing to see. But here's the thing, if you stop doing these things and you just go back to your regular habits, if you've been trying to get really good at a video game for years and then you stop playing for a few months or for an entire year, you're going to see your gameplay go from probably better than average to where you used to be, just an average or less than average player at the game. I know that would probably be in the less than average. If, you, if you're trying to be really great in this relationship and you've been spending immense amounts of time with this person, talking to them every single day, learning about their quirks and different things about them, if you stop doing that and you stop talking to them, your communication is going to get lower. Your relationship with them after you stop talking with them will not necessarily be the same. So you might be up here at one point, but then when you stop doing those things and you stop investing yourself and investing time into the thing or that person, you're going to start to regress back to where it was before you started making changes in your life. And so 21 days ago, as a church, we started sacrificing something and we gave it to God, whether it was food, maybe it was social media, maybe it was uh, watching Twitch. I don't know what it was that you sacrificed, playing a video game or video games all together. And you sacrificed and gave it to God, understanding that God was going to be the one to satisfy those needs. If you gave up food, you were thinking, God, I, I know it's going to be tough for me to get throughout the day and, and I'm going to be hungry, but I'm giving it to you, understanding that you are the provider, you are the sustainer, you are the one that can, that can help me get through this time. And then as we did that, it also gave you more time to be able to spend with God. And so as a church, we've been going every single day, we've been praying together. And also not just as a church, because we've been going into Discord as a church praying together, but individually, I hope that you've been praying on your own as well because that's the reason why we do prayer and fasting they're coupled together for a reason and it's to grow in our relationship with god and so i truly hope and pray that 
through the past 21 days that you have grown immensely in your relationship with God. But I think that there's a question that, honestly, I didn't ask for a very long time in my life after doing prayer and fasting the first few times, and I don't think enough people ask this question. As we move forward, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like we just got done with 21 days of prayer and fasting, but now what? And so the question I would ask you is, what's next? What is next for you as we continue to move forward in our lives? And I think there's many things that we have in our lives to continue mo- moving forward with, and we're going to touch on a few in just a second. But I started thinking of big developer companies. And I could get into Microsoft and the fact that they they went and bought ZeniMax and then they said, what's next? And I read an article today. I truly think, I honestly think that Microsoft like steals my sermons or something. They own Google or something like that. And they just take out pieces of my sermon because literally they put what's next in their article. And then they go and they acquire Blizzard. Okay, they acquired Blizzard. But really, if you want to think about it, and maybe you're going to disagree with me, And I'm not going to say this is opinion. I'm just going to say you're wrong if you disagree with me on this one. Honestly, who is always thinking of what's next? It's Nintendo. They are always breaking new ground in something. Okay, so they don't have the greatest graphics. They don't have the best power on their consoles. But Nintendo is always breaking new ground and always thinking, what is next? They have the different forms of consoles. The Nintendo 64 can, came out. That controller, that thing, that revolutionized my hands, okay? That was amazing. You had a joystick on the controller. It had, I don't have three hands to wire or three bars. You never even used the directional buttons. I don't know why it was even there on the controller, but it was revolutionary at the time. You had a Z button. It wasn't even a thing, okay? So that was revolutionary. Then it came out with the GameCube and... It, had a carrier on the side, which is actually why the Switch got spawned off of that. But I'm just saying, and then you had the Wii with the motion controls. Then you had the Wii U, which myself and five other people bought. So we're not even going to talk about that. But then after that, they came out with the Switch. Revolutionary. You can play it in your hands like a Game Boy, and you can dock it so you can play it just as if it were a console, because it is a console. They are always thinking of what's next. Then it starts thinking about some of their games, and the biggest one that I can think of is Super Smash Brothers. Okay, Super Smash Brothers 64 was an amazing game. And then Super Smash Brothers Melee came out, and then Sakurai came out, and he said, "I'm never gonna make another Super Smash Brothers game again." And then we have Super Smash Brawl. Okay, and then he said, "I'm never gonna make another Smash game again. I need an app." I said, you do need an app. And he came out with Smash 4. And then the one that nobody remembers to smash on the 3DS. And then he said, I am never going to make one again. But if I do make one, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to make a game that is completely different from the entire Super Smash Brothers franchise. Or I'm going to make the greatest Super Smash Brothers game that you have ever seen in your entire life. And praise the Lord, we got Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, the greatest Super Smash Brothers game that we have ever seen in the entire franchise. And 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 now he's saying he's not going to make another one, but we'll see. Sakurai does actually need a nap at this point. He gave us extra characters. He gave us a. It's just too good. It's too good. But he was always thinking, what's next? How can it be better? And so for our lives, after we just got done with twenty one days of prayer and fasting, I want to ask you for your life. What's next? And like I said, I think there's multiple different things that we can do that's next in our lives, but I'm going to hit on a couple of those so that you can continue moving forward in your relationship with God and that you won't regress and just go backwards. And so the first thing that I would say is we need to praise God. We need to continue praising God. Praise God for what he has done in the past 21 days in your life as you've been going through this time. If you grew in your faith and your relationship, then be praising God for that. Maybe there's been some received answers and prayers that you've been praying for. You've been praying for healing. You've been praying for this person and God's been giving you answers. Praise him for that. Praise him for the victories that you've seen in the past 21 days. Don't only just praise him. Maybe some of you, maybe some of you overcame a sin in the past 21 days. And so praise God that you were able to overcome those things. Maybe you saw God's hand work in a miraculous way that you never expected before. Continue praising God for that. Maybe even you're going through a trying time right now, 
I'm going to tell you, praise God through your trials as well. We're going to talk about that in a second, but praise him for what he has done. It is so easy. It is so easy in our lives to get caught up in the distractions. And we're going to talk about those distractions in a minute. But when this happens, we forget to praise God. When the trials and the tribulations come our way, we forget to praise God. And so I want to read for you guys. It comes from Psalm chapter 150. I'm going to read the whole chapter. And it says this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him in it to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you have breath in your lungs? Do you have breath in your lungs? If you do have breath in your lungs, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what baggage you carry, no matter where you are in your walk with God, no matter what you've done in the past, no matter where you're at in your life, I encourage you, praise the Lord and continue praising his name. At my old job, I used to work in a factory and I remember as you work for years and years and years with people, you, you get to know a little, you get to know about them on a personal level. And I remember this guy that I used to talk to almost every single day. His name was Joey. And I walked in one day and I was going through a really difficult time in my life at this point. I was in a job that honestly, it was a good job, but it wasn't what I loved. It wasn't fulfilling me. And so I didn't like my job. I didn't like where I was at. Finances were rough at the time. I had just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. My wife's health wasn't doing well. There's just so many things that were going on in my life. And I remember I walked in to my job. This is another reason why I was upset. It's six o'clock in the morning. It should be illegal. All right. I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning every single day. I walked in and I walked past Joey and Joey stopped me for a second. He said, Ray, I, I have a question for you. I said, what, what's up? And he said, you got a lot of challenges and difficulties that you have going on in your life. How do you have a smile on your face every single day that you walk in here? And I looked at him and I said, because I am blessed and highly favored. And he looked at me and he thought I was out of my mind. Okay. He was like, what does that even mean? And I said, let me put it this way. I said, I have a lot of things going on right now, a lot of things that can make me down. And I do get angry about those things. I do get sad about those things. But I have a hope of something that is so much better in the future, because I know Jesus Christ, and he lives inside of me. And there's that hope can't be taken no matter what anybody does, or no matter what trial comes my way. And I wish I could tell you that in that moment that he fell on his knees and he started praising the Lord and that he gave his heart over to Jesus. He didn't. But what it did do was it opened up an opportunity for him to continue asking questions. It opened up opportunities for other people in my job as well to continue asking me questions about my faith, about how I can get through these things and still continue moving forward and continue just being happy about life. Because when I first walked into that job, I recognized People just did not like, like, they didn't like life at all. I asked Joey one day, I said, what would you like to do in life? And he said, I'd like to feed the dolphins. It's like, you're working as an engineer. You want to go feed dolphins? It doesn't even make sense. But the thing is, is I realized there are so many people in that job. They just weren't happy. And the reason why was because they didn't have something to give them joy. They were looking for the joy in other places of, in life. And so what we should be doing as we're praising God more, it opens up opportunities for us to be able to give Jesus to other people at all times. So I encourage you, after the 21 days of prayer and fasting is over and we've broken it, continue to praise God. The second thing I would ask you guys to do, and I talked about this a little bit already, beware of trials and tribulations because they are coming. They are coming. Let me read for you guys Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And I touched on this very slightly last week, but I want to read the whole passage for you. And it says this, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 
40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. I love Jesus. He always has an answer for everything. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, and Satan uses he uses the Bible here, he will command his angels concerning you, and, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus is smarter though. Verse 7, Jesus said to him, On the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Now, real quickly, I just want to put this out there. I get the question all the time. Jesus is ne- Jesus never proclaimed that he was God. Right here in verse 7, he proclaims that he is God. Verse 8, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. We see here that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He then became hungry. I'm sure that he was feeling pretty, pretty, like he didn't have much energy. You can, you know, food gives us energy, water gives us energy. Those things help us to be able to continue to live. But after 40 days and 40 nights, I'm sure that Jesus was extremely tired. And we see in verse 2 and verse 3, after he did this, it says, Then he became hungry, and then Satan came to him to tempt him. When we fast and we pray, we get to this point peak moment with God and we are on a mountaintop, okay? We are closer to God than we have been before because we have been continuing to move in our relationship with him as we continue to do that. And I pray that you feel like that today. But here's the thing, and here's the thing that I've seen in my life over and over again. I found that when I'm at these peak moments and I'm super strong in my faith and I'm believing more than I ever have before, and I'm excited about what God is doing in my life, that's when the enemy attacks at the hardest. Things get exceptionally difficult afterwards. Maybe you've experienced this, whether it's you going to a youth camp at some point in your life, maybe you've done church events or like we just did 21 days of prayer and fasting. Maybe you've even been on mission trips and you come back from those things and you are just on such a high mountaintop. And then all of a sudden, the enemy starts putting obstacles in your path. He starts dragging you down. He starts putting up these trials and tribulations in your life. And he's going to try and bring down what was just growing in your life. He's going to start casting doubt into your mind and make you question so many things in your life. But it's during these moments that we need to lean on God. We need to lean on him so much more, grabbing a hold of him, trusting in him. Because I can tell you, if we allow those trials and temptations to come into our life and those tribulations, let's listen, temptation, okay? The book of Hebrews tells us what sin is, that sin will entangle you and it will stop you. It will trap you. These trials and tribulations are coming. Be aware, be vigilant about what these, what the enemy is trying to attack with you. And the reason why is because, listen, God is starting something in your life. He has grown something in your heart and in your life. Do not allow the enemy to take what you've already gained. You've been growing in your relationship with God. Maybe you're here on this mountaintop, but what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to get you back to a normal lifestyle. A lifestyle where you weren't praising God, where you weren't worshiping him. He's trying to do that. But God has started something new in your life. And I hope he has during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. So continue to, like like I said, the what's next for me. Beware of the trials and tribulations. The last thing that I want to see, and I want to see this for myself. I want to see this for you and your individual life, and I want to see this for the church as well, is continue to move forward. 
after prayer and fasting, it does it doesn't just stop there. That's not the end of everything. Like I said before, when you're spending time in a specific activity or you're spending time with somebody specific in your life and you're, and you're trying to grow in that relationship with that person, you are going to get on a whole new level with that individual. Like I said, your communication is going to be better. Your reflexes are going to get better if you're trying to get better at a game. I tried to get really good at golf one point, and honestly, I'm still not great, but I got decent at it because I was trying to do it over, and it was a repetitive thing that I was doing all of the time for hours and hours and hours trying to get better, and so you get better as you go along, but... When you stop investing yourself into the thing, the game, or the individual that you're that you're you're going towards, you're gonna start regressing. And you're gonna start seeing that I might have been here at one point, but now I'm just back to baseline again. You see, prayer and fasting, when we go into it, it isn't just about getting on a whole new relationship with God for 21 days. It's about getting in a whole new relationship with God and gaining a whole new uh, perspective of who he is in your life. And then to take that and make that your baseline and continue growing from there. You need to continue growing in your relationship with God after the 21 days of prayer and fasting. It's not just ending. And now I'm not telling you to continue fasting, okay? I'm going to be breaking my fast afterwards with either some chicken nuggets or I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A and grab something. I don't know yet, but I'm going to break my fast, okay? I- I'm hungry. I want to be able to eat. <laughs> and I'm sure many of you, you want to break your fast as well. But here's the thing. The new habits that you've started in your life, the more time that you've been spending with God, the more that you've been reading your Bible, the more that you've been spending in God's presence, continue doing that. Because maybe maybe you're thinking after the 21 days of prayer and fasting, I just go back to what I used to do, where I used to not spend as much time with God. I, I wasn't reading my Bible as much. I wasn't praying all that much. We weren't praying as a church together maybe as much. And if we just go back to that, what was the whole point of the prayer and fasting in the first place? To, for 21 days, for three weeks, to be on a whole new relationship with God and then just go back to where we were? I don't think that's what God intended. I don't think that's what he intended for 21 days of prayer and fasting for this church either. And this might seem a little bit off topic what I'm about to talk about, but we need to stop labeling ourselves from the past as well and the, uh, our past thinking, our past relationships that we have, because a lot of times those things, they'll, they'll make us think that we can't move forward in our relationship with God. And that's just not true. So I want to read for you guys, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. It says this, do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Let me read that one more time. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things in the past. When we do this, and we're just looking at past things and just pondering about past things, we are never going to be able to move forward. Let me give you an example for those of you that have a driver's license. When you're on the road and you're driving, you have the windshield, you have side view mirrors, and you have a rear view mirror. Okay, that's literally what you have to work with. You know, obviously you got your steering wheel, odometer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about vision things, okay? What do you do? You focus on the windshield. That's where your focus is. You cannot get to your destination if you don't focus on moving forward. What do we have the rear view mirror for? So we can glance at it, look at what's behind us, learn what's behind us, look at the side of your mirrors, look at what's the side of us, but you focus on the windshield moving forward to your destination. But if you sit there and you're just driving along and you're looking only in the rear view mirror, you're going to get into an accident, first of all. But the thing is, is you're not going to be evil. You're focusing on everything behind you, everything that's already passed, and you won't be able to move forward. At least you won't be able to move forward very safely. Or you're focusing on your side view mirrors you're focusing on what's beside you, but you're not focusing on what the actual vision is in moving forward in your life. And so I ask you for your personal lives, what's next for your life? What's the next step that you can take? 
Maybe it's baptism. Maybe you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life and you've never been baptized before. Maybe it's becoming an XP group leader. Maybe it's growing in something and serving on one of the teams in ministry, but you've just never done that. Maybe some of you, you're thinking, I need to go to Bible college. God has called me to do something, be in mission work, to do this, to do that. And maybe you need to go to Bible college, whatever. What is your next step in life? Take this opportunity now to move forward, to continue moving forward. And don't allow yourself to just go back to where you were three weeks ago. Maybe your relationship with God three weeks ago was really good. But now if it's at a whole new level, it can continue growing so much more. So I encourage you, continue moving forward. Continue taking those next steps in your life. But I don't think it's just about the individuals moving forward in this church. I think that the entire church needs to move forward as well. The body of Christ needs to move forward. Just like you're going to be moving forward, this church will, God Squad Church will continue to move forward. Okay? There is so much opportunity. We literally have the biggest platform in the entire world to be able to to be able to reach gamers, tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we still have a vision for this church, okay? We still have house churches that are in the works and we're talking about them and making sure that they're going to be happening later this year. We're still talking about yearly meetups. And listen, right now, maybe we're talking about doing one meetup somewhere in the nation for, you know, every year. But I would love to see that in the future, we have teams of people, every, uh, like weekly, weekly things where people are going throughout the the nation and the entire entire world, meeting with other people and worshiping with them, growing in relationship with each other. We, we're revamping the XP groups and I'm super excited about that. And that's coming in the future too. And we're going to start seeing people building in relationships with each other. And they're going to be interested in the same things and they're going to be growing in their relationships with God. And then finally, we've already talked about this. Uh, Pastor Daylight, Pastor TJ, he preached on it just a few weeks back when we were talking about our core values changing. We talked about our first one, knowing God through our Saturday services. We're talking about experiencing community through our XP groups where people are getting together and they're and they're moving forward with each other. That's what they're doing. They're finding a way forward with each other. We have discover your purpose through our growth track. There's so many people that come to me all the time and they say, I don't know what my purpose is, Pastor Boz. I have no idea what God has called me to. I don't feel like I'm unique. Listen, I got, a, I got words for you. God has told you that you are unique. He he has promised you and he has created you with his hands. He has knit, he knit you in your mother's womb so that you would be the person that he created you to be. You have a purpose in your life. And then after you discover your purpose, what do you do? Our fourth core value, you make a difference by serving. You make a difference by serving him. We have so much potential. But if we keep focusing on our past successes, our past failures, we can learn from those things. Don't get me wrong. We can learn from all of those things. But if we keep focusing on all of the things that have already passed, we're never going to move forward together. And this is the time for our church to unite together as one. I know we've been through a lot. We've gone through a lot for the past six years. I'll be completely honest. We have been through a lot of things, but we will continue to move forward. We just need to unite together and continue looking to Jesus, continue seeking his face. I'll read for you guys one last scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, it says this, Finally, brethren, rejoice. Be made complete. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. He doesn't say, be half-baked. He doesn't say, uh, you know, be uncomfortable, be quarreling. You don't need to have the same mindset about stuff. Don't worry about, no, no, no. He says, be made complete, be comforted, be like-minded, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. If God is with us, there is nothing that can stop us. The body of Christ will continue to move forward. God Squad Church will continue to move forward. And so I implore you that we move forward together. Now, some of you 
might be listening to the sermon right now and maybe this is your first time here and I, w- I want to welcome you. Maybe this is your first time listening to one of our podcasts or watching the VOD. I want to welcome you here. Maybe some of you, though, you've never really heard about Jesus before. And you're wondering, I don't know what is actually next in my life. I don't know what actually is happening in my life. And so what I want to do is I want to give you, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I want to give you an opportunity to pray and to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Because listen, Jesus is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. It is the, the salvation is the greatest gift that I've ever received in my life. There is a God out there that loves you so much more than you could ever imagine. Jesus Christ came to this earth and he lived a perfect life. He was tempted. We just read about it just a short while ago. He was tempted, but he lived a perfect life anyways. And he went to the cross for you and for me. He thought of your face when he was on the cross. And after he died, he demonstrated that he could break through death and he did break through death and he broke through sin as he rose from the grave. So that one day for us, if we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we can repent of our sins, we can ask for forgiveness, and his blood that he spilled on the cross is now covering my heart and my heart is not filled with the sin and the guilt and the shame that it should be filled with because Jesus paid a debt that I should have paid. But he paid it for you anyways because he loves you so much more than you could ever imagine. And so I want to ask you today, Because if you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, you'll be so much more fulfilled than you've ever felt in your life. And you will be able to live with God for all of eternity. So I want to ask you today, I want to ask you today, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, or maybe you've walked away for a long time and you feel like you need to rededicate your life, I would ask you to repeat this prayer after me. Let's pray. Dear God, I come before you right now. I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross and I believe that he rose from the dead. And right now, God, I receive your grace, your mercy, and your salvation. I commit my life to you. And Jesus, come and live inside of my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give it up for those people right now that are accepting Jesus Christ into their lives? Listen, this is your next step. There's so many things that we can be doing as a church and as individuals in our lives as a next step. But those of you that just accepted Jesus Christ into your life, that was your next step. And so if somebody could do me a favor and type exclamation point next level in the chat. I get too excited over these things. Exclamation point next level in the chat. If you just made that decision today for the first time, I encourage you to click on that link. It will send you to a form that we ask you to fill out as much information as you feel comfortable giving. This is going to give us a way to be able to connect with you, to give you some resources. Maybe you have questions. Where do I start reading in the Bible? This is a really big book. It's actually called the book of books. Okay. It's got a lot of them. Maybe you don't know where to start reading. Maybe you don't know how to pray. Maybe you've never heard you've never heard of baptism before. You've heard people talking about it, but you don't actually know what that's about. Maybe you yourself, maybe you have accepted Jesus Christ before, some of you, and you've never been baptized. I encourage you, sign up for baptiz- baptism as well. There's no there's no reason to wait. There is no reason to wait. I don't care what you're going through in your life. I will I I will talk to you about it. Okay? Get baptized if you've never been baptized before. But those of you that just accepted Jesus, I want to congratulate you. And so what I, the last thing I would ask you to do, I don't want to put the spotlight on, on you or anything like that. We want to celebrate with you though. So if you did just ask Jesus Christ into your life, I would just ask you to put a yes in the chat so we can see who you are. If you are live here today, put a yes in chat. Maybe you're putting a yes in the comments out in YouTube. I don't know what you're doing. But if you did accept Jesus Christ, I would ask you to put a yes in the chat so we can celebrate with you. We can congratulate you because I'm 
honestly, it is the greatest step that you will ever take in your entire life. And I promise you that your life will never be the same. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me. So I'm going to kick it over right now. But God bless and take care, everybody.